Hello everyone and welcome back to the course. So in this part of chapter one, we are going to go over what defines a profession. And we are going to have a look at an interesting case study that we saw in class. And I'll give a quick summary about it uh, in the video. So first of all, to truly comprehend what is a profession, we need to reinforce our motives behind studying engineering ethics. And one main reason is the heavy impact uh, of any malpractice in engineering on society. We have multiple incidents through history that provide examples of such impacts. One quick example that is recurrent till today is when a civil engineer decides to use subpar materials in the construction of a building. Fast forward a few years, uh, the building collapses, uh, and a lot of people, uh, a big bunch of people die. That is why it is critical for an engineer to possess high levels of self-conduct and integrity to know how to navigate the world. So one question would arise about the worth of teaching ethics now. The average age of a student in the class is 23. Therefore, by this time, most of you have their mind made up for them. They know right and wrong from home, but it is your own perspective, right and wrong from your own perspective. Uh, well, we are not here to discuss personal ethics. We are here to discuss professional ethics. So what is the difference uh, between uh, professional ethics and personal ethics? Well, for one, personal ethics revolves around the manner by which you treat other people in day-to-day -day life. Whereas professional ethics involves choices that are on an organizational level and of an organizational uh, nature, and therefore uh, of a more formal nature. So what is a professional uh, setting? Well, we need to understand what is a professional setting. We need to define what is a profession. So one quick question would be, are carpenters or athletes considered to be professions? Take a minute, think about it, write down what you think, uh, pause the video, and then we move on to the next slide. From there, we move on to doctors and lawyers. Are those two career paths uh, considered professions? Take also a few minutes to consider the similarities and differences between all four options. It is clear by now that we require a set of guidelines to define what is a profession. The first idea is that a profession encompasses work that is of a sophisticated nature and requires good judgment uh, and good judgmental abilities, in addition to discretion. Additionally, to be part of such a profession, you have to join, you need to have uh, uh, some form of formal education and therefore join an educational institution that is certified to give you uh, degrees that allow you to practice this profession, such as universities. Furthermore, after you have gotten your degree, you need to join a professional governing body such as ASCE the American Society of Civil Engineers for Civil Engineers, or the New York Bar for lawyers who want to work in New York. Finally, it is expected that significant public good results from the practice of such professions. The previous definition mentioned a few key concepts. The first of them is judgment. So what is judgment? It is to be capable of using your experience and knowledge to make the best decisions that affect the lives of people and society in a positive manner 
and in an economic fashion as well. Another concept was discretion. What is discretion as well? Well, to be discreet is to keep secrets well. Secrets of customers, company secrets, trade secrets, anything of this sort, you keep it to yourself. It is not public knowledge, you don't share them uh, with random people on the street. It is for you and you only, and be because it is in the concept, uh, context of work. Additionally, discretion is also being able to uh, be autonomous in exercising proper judgment in anything that faces you in your profession. This leads us to the idea of moral autonomy, which is the culmination of the two previous concepts. An engineer would keep practicing and applying moral thinking until it becomes in their nature and part of their character. One would say follow the law and you'd be ethical. Yes, indeed, since engineering is governed by laws and codes of conduct. These laws are all inferred from ethical principles and that, that is why they have a lot of ethical values. Yet, it is possible to face unique cases where what is legal is not the right thing to do, and what is illegal is the right thing to do. Therefore, we try to study ethical conflicts that have no legal guidance. In the live class session, we discussed the Ford Pinto case, where Ford had designed a car with a deadly problem and they were aware of it. They did a benefit cost analysis where the lives of people were converted to monetary values. Many people died. The link for the video that was watched in class will be in the description for you to view. So this is a wrap on how to define professions and our first case study, and I'll see you all in the next video.